The purpose of this video is to provide an introduction and overview to human lymphoid organs. Because the human lymphoid organs play a major role in all immune responses, this video will touch on all five of the major themes of this course. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to describe the major lymphoid organs that play a role in the production and development of immune cells, describe the general role of each lymphoid organ in the immune system and the immune response, and describe the major constituents of lymph and how lymph circulates in the body. So, the human lymphoid organs can be grouped in two major groups. The primary lymphoid organs, which are the sites at which all immune cells uh, are developed. Um, these include the bone marrow and the thymus, uh, and the secondary lymphoid organs, which are the sites where immune cells go to complete their development, to interact with other immune cells, and to generate the adaptive immune response. These include the spleen, the lymphatic vessels, the lymph nodes, the tonsils and adenoids, and, and the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. Now it's worth beginning with a brief review of hematopoiesis. Remember that hematopoiesis begins from a common progenitor stem cell, a, a hematopoietic stem cell, and that these cells develop into two major lineages in the bone marrow. Uh, one is the lymphoid lineage, which includes the B cells, the T cells, and the NK cells. And the second is the myeloid lineage, which includes the red blood cells, the platelets, and the other white blood cells, including the phagocytes, such as the neutrophils uh, and monocytes, and the uh, basophils and eosinophils. Now, the bone marrow is the primary site of hematopoiesis and lymphopoiesis in adults. Hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow generate and replenish all types of blood cells. And maturation of all of the myeloid and lymphoid lineage cells begins in the bone marrow and then continues in other lymphoid organs. The bone marrow is within the center of many of the bones in our body. It's shown here in this um, picture. And as you can see, it has a structure almost like a sponge. And in this case, uh, this picture designates the red marrow and the yellow marrow. The red marrow is the site of uh, the most active generation of, of blood cells. The yellow marrow is marrow that has become infiltrated with fat. In infants and small children, all of the marrow is red marrow. And as we, as we age, the marrow becomes more and more infiltrated with fat and becomes yellow marrow. Now, the second primary lymphoid organ is the thymus, which is located behind the sternum and superior to the heart. It is the primary site of T-cell maturation. I think of it as sort of the T-cell university or T-cell college. It's where T-cells go to be educated. And the thymus plays a major role in preventing autoimmunity because it's in the thymus where the initial events of immune tolerance uh, begin to be initiated. The thymus is most active in young children where the organ is quite large. But over time as we age, the thymus becomes increasingly infiltrated by fat and begins to atrophy and is less active in older age. Those are the primary lymphoid organs. Now let's move on to the secondary lymphoid organs. To do that, let's begin by uh, reviewing what lymph is. Lymph is composed of three major constituents. The interstitial fluid, which is the fluid that leaves the vascular space and bathes the tissues. It has a a makeup much like plasma, although it is somewhat less uh, concentrated in protein than plasma is. Lymph also contains white blood cells that leave the vascular space and circulate through the tissues, and it includes chyle, which is made up of chylomicrons, which are lipoprotein complexes that are absorbed into the lymph from digested foods in the gut. Now on the right, you see uh, that the lymph has a very milky appearance uh, because of the white blood cells and the chyle that is present in the lymph. This is lymph that has been drawn from uh, the thoracic duct of a patient. Now, one of the prominent secondary lymphoid organs is the spleen. The spleen is loaded, located below the diaphragm and under the ribs on the left-hand side of the body. The spleen is the primary site where B cells complete maturation after they leave the bone marrow. And the spleen consists of red pulp, 
and white pulp. The red pulp serves as a sort of filtration unit to clear the blood of damaged cells such as erythrocytes, bacteria, etc. And this is very important uh, as a sort of sieve or, or filtration unit for the immune system so that it can capture these pathogens. Um, there is also white pulp in the spleen, which are the sites uh, that where all of the lymphoid cells reside and uh, interact in the spleen. Now, the lymphatic vessels are uh, located throughout the body. These are blind-ended capillaries that intertwine with the arterioles and the capillaries and the venules of the vascular system. These blind-ended lymphatic capillaries are in the tissues and they serve to suck up or slurp up the interstitial fluid that is out bathing the tissues. Valves in the lymphatic vessels make it so that lymph can only flow in one direction uh, to back towards the main circulatory system. The lymph flows from the lymphatic capillaries to lymphatic collecting vessels to the right lymphatic duct and then finally to the thoracic duct where it then dumps back into the main vasculature, back into the blood. Uh, it, the lymph is returned to the, to the vascular to, at the level of the subclavian veins. In route, as I mentioned, the lymph uh, filters through the lymph nodes. And lymph nodes have a very specific architecture that allows the lymph to come into the lymph node to then circulate uh, through uh, and around the lymphocytes that are present in the, in the lymph node. The lymphocytes uh, are aggregated together in what are called lymphoid follicles that have a B cell zone, which is shown here by uh, item number three in the picture at the bottom, and a T cell zone, which is shown by item number four. Um, these lymphoid follicles are the sites at which B and T cells interact, and it's the, are, these are the sites where T cells help B cells to undergo immunoglobulin class switching and to develop adaptive immune responses. The tonsils and adenoids are a sort of specialized lymph node. They've got a cellular structure very similar to lymph nodes with germinal centers that have B cell and T cell zones. Uh, and together, the tonsils and adenoids form a ring around the posterior oropharynx and nasopharynx so that they can sample all of the antigen that comes in through the mouth by virtue of either breathing or eating, and this allows the immune system to be exposed to all of those things. This is part of the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, uh, which allows the immune system to interact with all of the things that are ingested uh, in our bodies. The mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue uh, is made up of aggregates of, of uh, lymphoid lymphocytes that make up lymphoid follicles like those that are in lymph nodes. These are located at various places along the gut, uh, in the pharynx and in the bronchi. And these again allow the immune cells to have access to the any antigens that we may breathe in or antigens that we may consume. And it provides immune defenses at sites of recurrent exposure to pathogens and foreign proteins such as food, bacteria, and bacterial products. Okay, the key takeaway points from this video are number one, that the lymphoid organs form a network of sites where immune cells can be generated and begin to develop. These are the primary lymphoid organs, including the bone marrow and the thymus. They also provide sites uh, where immune cells frequently meet pathogens or they are, where immune cells are aggregated to be educated, activated, or matured. These are the secondary lymphoid organs, including the spleen, the lymph nodes, the tonsils, the adenoids, and the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. The second take-home point is that lymph is a bodily fluid that consists of interstitial fluid that bathes the tissues, white blood cells that leave the vascular space to uh, migrate through the tissues, and chyle.